first thing we'll do is we're going to open up Dreamweaver. We want to access the da, 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 functions. So if we open up the functions folder and we're going to open up sandbox because that's where we have our git blog at. And what we need to do is figure out how we're going to re uh, reformat this date. And that's kind of the beauty of timestamps. Now we can do this uh, either with PHP <coughs> or we can do this with um, MySQL. We can, we can return values uh, uh, via the query uh, in, in a format that we want. And that's the way I'm going to show you how to do that. If you want to, you can search Google, just type in MySQL, date function, date time function, whatever, and you'll get this, this list of all the functions you can use while working within a query. Um, a lot of these are really nice. Uh, you tend to, to use some of the same ones over and over, and we're going to pick a few of these to use. So as we go through this list, what I want to do is I want to work on, I want to find the right way to display this date. And in my mind, right now, let's, let's do the, the month actually spelled out. So February or January, whatever. And then the, the day of the month, 0, 02, 0, 04, 31, whatever. And then the four digit year. So we find the functions that fit. So we have day of month, we have month name, and then of course year. So we're going to use these functions within our query to extract these, uh, these values from our timestamp. And in order to do so, we're going to do something called, we're going to use an alias. And the alias is used um, by using the AS. AS is the term used to create an, an alias. It kind of looks like as, and, and that tripped me up a lot when I was first learning. But uh, it actually almost, it almost makes sense, though, when you, when you read it. Uh, if you read this uh, query as a statement, it would almost make sense. So let's look at that. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to edit this query here, this uh, query on line 23. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep it saying select all, but we're going to say select all comma. And we're going to, normally what you would do is you can, you can use comma to just select specific fields. In this case, we're going to select um, the same field three times, uh, only this, but wrapping it in a function. And, and I know this doesn't make sense right now, but it'll make sense once we type it out. So. So the first thing we're going to do is type out month name. And we need to put in two parentheses because this is a function. And you'll find this uh, pretty universal with, with most uh, programming languages, languages in general, is that functions usually have the parentheses for parameters. And in this case, the parameter is the field that we want to extract the, the month name from, which in our case is date. Now, this function is complete. It is extracting the month name from date. But what we need to do is create what's called an alias so that we can actually retrieve it down here, just like we do with the other fields in this array. So we say month name from the date as, or alias, and then we give it just whatever name we want. As long as the name doesn't match a field we already have, we won't have any issues. So let's just call it the month. So what we've done now is created an alias or for layman's terms a, a temporary field um, and that way we can now extract that uh, or that that will actually be returned when we run this while loop here and that'll make sense here in a second. So we need we need more than this so like I said we need three so comma now we want the day of the month day of month and true to form parentheses put in date again and remember we're putting in date not because we're looking for the current date we're looking for the date field that we made so don't get confused by that we need to make another alias so as 
the day. And remember these these terms, the day, the month, these are these are totally up to you as long as they do not conflict with fields that you already have or um, any any uh, predefined terms within MySQL. So we need one more, and that is year. It's a pretty easy one to remember. Put in date as the year. So now we're doing a query. We're selecting all, so we get all the fields if we want. Um, but then we're also creating these, quote, temporary fields, otherwise known as aliases. I would call them aliases because temporary field can mean something else. Um, I'm just using that as an example. Uh, so we can now retrieve these as such. So let's go down to where we're displaying the date. And let's take date out of there. First thing we want to show is the month. So then we can go ahead and copy this little line here where we concatenated. Copy, space, paste it again, change this to the day, space, paste, change this to the year. Alright, so I want you to go ahead and save and upload this. Control Shift S or Control S, Control Shift U. Okay, so now we've got our page loaded again here. And uh, I'm just going to go click on Home and then click on Blog again. And there you go. We have our formatted date. Uh, now we can put a comma in there where it's supposed to be. So let's go ahead and do that. Flip back to Dreamweaver. I'm over here right after the day. Just put a comma in there. Make sure it's in between the quotes because remember we're concatenating and this is another string. So remember that. String, 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 string. Concatenate, spit out a value, concatenate, spit out a value, concatenate, spit out a value. So that's what that does. Save, upload, let's go take a look. Now we got a comma. So this is starting to take take shape here. Uh, it's sorted in the right way, it's sorted descending. Um, we still trying to think of how we want to integrate this because I'm thinking the blog could actually be integrated into say the home page uh, as a sidebar or something maybe down the line here. So we might just eliminate this blog page or keep the blog page to show all the blog entries but then maybe use the take advantage of the the space over here, well the space that's not there yet, but make some space over here and put some of the blog entries here, the most recent ones, limit it to like two or three, things like that. I'm going to do something else here before we end this this lesson. This uh, entry div here, let's call this, uh, I might get rid of it here, um, but for now let's just call this entry underscore blog and we'll go into the CSS over here and we'll create a style or create a rule for entry underscore blog find the old entry one here we'll just actually here let me show you a good not really a secret but a tip let's skip the uh, underscore here we're gonna apply two two rules to this two classes. So entry is going to give it that buffer that we want. Blog is going to make it a little more custom to, to the blog. So if we go back to styles and instead of making entry underscore blog, let's just make blog. And what I want to do, and you know maybe we'll get rid of this, but I want to show how we can kind of put some more styling around these, these blog entries. Let's first start with giving it a background color. And we'll make it very subtle. We'll do the E, D, E, D, E, whatever that ends up being. Save that, upload it. Make sure you save the sandbox and upload it. And refresh after you saved and uploaded. There, now we have a background color. Uh, let's make that a little bit lighter. Let's do EF, EF, which is almost white. Save, upload, flip back over, 
There we go. That's nice and subtle. Now we need to put some spacing in between the two here. And so each blog post, we need to put a margin. And let's just do 10 pixels, 0 pixels. So 10 pixels on top and bottom, 0 pixels left and right. Save, upload, refresh. Now we have some spacing. So now we have a little bit, even more contrast to show these are individual blog posts. Now I'll show you just a little, it's not really a secret, but it's something newer to HTML5, and we'll just do this for fun, but it's not really going to match our layout, so we might get rid of it later. Um, but let's do border radius. I tell you what, this really was a real pain in the ass when uh, when we were when we were doing this without CSS3. We had to make images with little rounded corners and put them all over the place, and there was all sorts of different ways that we figured out um, to to combat that. Now we just need to give it a class or a, a, a property of border radius, and we'll give it a border radius of five pixels, and that'll go all the way around. Save and upload. Control Shift S. <laughs> I'm doing it again. Control S. Control Shift U. Go ahead and refresh. Here we go. Nice little rounded corners there, and it's it's subtle enough that maybe we can keep that there. So we've got a nice little look and feel here going. Um, I mean, it's definitely minimal. It's a very minimalist um, uh, design, but that was the point. The point was to not go overboard with graphics um, and, and just show you how to do things with code, with CSS, with HTML, now PHP, and a little bit of uh, jQuery slash JavaScript. So thank you for tuning into this lesson. And we'll get into uh, more of the admin in the next lesson.